How to journal so your anxious brain stops bullying you. Now, I've been feeling anxious every single day since eight years of my life because when I was 10 years old, I got heavily bullied at school and then I developed a generalized anxiety disorder because I couldn't defend myself. I was a complete nobody. I was ugly. I didn't have confidence. I was obese. I had fucked up teeth. That's why I have braces now. And it was a very easy target. So older guys started to pick on me. I felt so hopeless and so alone that I just got so anxious of other people's social situations and it basically I got traumatized and I got deeply hurt inside. And I had to find out why I'm feeling this way, what I can do about it and really understand my anxiety. And one of the ways that you can do that is by journaling. So in this video I will show you practical steps that you can literally use today to journal, understand your anxiety and finally calm your mind. And if you need help applying these strategies, you can click on the first link in the description to book a free call with me. We will talk and I will try to help you. Okay, so the first journaling protocol is a protocol by Angie Huberman, who's a very famous neuroscientist with over 5 million subscribers, subscri subscribers on YouTube, subscriptions, subs, subs on YouTube. And he was talking about this journaling protocol in like a two hour long video. And I just want to quickly give you like the bro science version of it. So it has been proven that talking therapy for men is not that effective, right? For girls it can work, but just talking about your anxiety and opening up to a therapist or a friend or a loved one is not that effective, right? So what can we do instead? Well, we can write about the experience. And there's another benefit because when you speak about the experience that maybe triggered anxiety and is making you really anxious, right? You have these negative thoughts, these anxious thoughts, the pain in your chest and the tightness and, you know, like every single breath kind of feels painful and you're not in the present moment, you're just thinking about the future, like what if this happens, what if this happens, what if this happens. Talking about that experience can make it worse because then you could get put into a state and basically relive the situation and make your anxiety worse. So writing about it is a way to express your feelings without talking to someone, which is quite unpleasurable, right? Because you risk getting hurt and it's not that effective for young men. It has been shown, right? Proven. And you also don't experience any symptoms of like reliving the situation because you're not talking about it, you're writing about it. So what do you actually have to do? Well, you just have to simply grab a, a piece of paper, get a pen and start to write for 15 to 30 minutes about a very deep problem that has been bothering you for a very long time. Now, this can be anything from like a very traumatic experience to like a minor problem that is making you anxious, something about the future, right? So maybe you have your driver's license test, maybe you have a test or an exam at school, maybe you're worried about a financial situation or about speaking to a girl, or if you get the job interview, or if you get a promotion or what if or what if, or maybe like a family problem. You just simply write about that experience for 15 to 30 minutes and you don't want to pay attention to grammar, you don't want to pay attention to spelling, you don't want to pay attention to if someone can read your handwriting. It all doesn't matter. You just want to simply focus on the facts, the emotions, and the situation as it was. So if it's something about the past, you just simply write down, okay, you know, when I was 10 years old, I got heavily bullied, and you really want to imagine yourself back then as it was, and you describe the situation in autistic detail. So you really have like a good image in your mind. And you just let it flow freely. You, like, you just write it, right? Just let it out. And that works wonders. <laughs> That is, that is so effective and you also want to keep in mind like the facts of the situation, how it turned out, like very emotional um, situations inside of the situation. So right for me, like a, a heightened state of anxiety was when I was getting pushed around and spat at. So I wrote that down. And what that does is basically reliving the situation and rewriting the narrative and that can basically fix your trauma and make you less anxious. Right, so without getting too much into the science, this can basically make you feel less anxious by putting you into a stressful situation, right? Writing about this for 10 to 15, 30 minutes will stress you out a bit. So after you're done, just make sure that you quickly gather yourself. You quickly do some kind of meditation or you maybe talk to someone, you take a cold shower or you do like a complete break just to gather yourself because you will be all over the place and have a lot of different emotions coming up. Now, while you're writing about a situation, you're basically processing the trauma. You're processing the problem inside of your mind and that is super effective, right? If you watch my channel, I talk about a lot of shadow work where you go back to the traumatic experience and you imagine it. Now you can also write about it and writing is less intimidating as like going back mentally and laying down and meditating for like an hour to really get the image in your head. This just takes 15 to 30 minutes and 
as soon as I did this, I saw the improvements almost instantly. I was literally like journaling like three, four, five pages. I think it was like four and a half pages about my traumatic experience. And after that, I felt a lot better. I just felt like I, you know, I had like a stone fell from my heart, basically. Right? Because you have to understand that when you get traumatized, it's a very unpleasant emotion. And your brain, basically, the principle of psychology, number one, is that you avoid, want to avoid pain and increase pleasure. That's why you clicked on this video, right? You want to relieve your anxiety, reduce your anxiety, stop your anxious mind from bullying you. And that is running away from pain, decreasing pain. Now, you operate this way all of the time. Every single living thing wants to stay alive. And your brain is the same way. So when you have an unpleasant, traumatic experience that happened to you in the past that maybe traumatized you and is now giving you anxiety or an unpleasant event about the, like, that you uh, think about in the future, like a what if, what if, what if, then you store these events, these memories, these experiences deep inside of you in your subconscious mind, right? You have two parts of your brain. Not really two parts, but two categoristics. You have a conscious mind, which is everything that you pick up with your five senses, everything that you are aware of right here. And below that, you have a subconscious mind, which is 95 to 99.5% of what's really going on. Now, if you don't believe me, are you right now thinking about your heart beating? No, it's beating automatically. That's your con subconscious mind taking over. And the negative experiences, because you don't want to think about them, and they're really unpleasant, you put them deep down inside of you into your subconscious mind. And the thing is that you don't work on them. You don't resolve them. They stay stuck on replay. You don't process these emotions and these events, these experiences. So they constantly stay stuck on replay inside of you. And the only way your subconscious mind can communicate with your conscious mind is through emotion. So why was I feeling anxious all of this time? Because inside of me there was a problem that I hadn't solved. And my body and mind was telling me through my anxiety, I don't feel safe. Something is wrong. Please help me. So I had to go back to that uh, traumatic experience, journal about it, visualize it, shadow work, and basically process this event. Now, you have to do this on a longer time horizon. It takes like four weeks to see the full benefits. So just journaling about it once a week for four weeks is like the most optical time horizon, right? You don't have to do it every single day. You don't have to stick to it like consistently. Four weeks about this one emotion, this one thing has significantly improved my mental health and studies support all of that. And it reduces your anxiety, it reduces, you know, the stressors inside of your body so it can actually, like, calm your mind, right? Because the thing is that the thoughts that you have, it, like, make you anxious. But your anxiety also gives you anxious thoughts, so it's the cycle that's constantly spinning and spinning and spinning and never stopping. So you have to either take care of your anxiety or of your thoughts. But by taking care of your anxiety and the root cause of your anxiety, which is your body and mind saying, I don't feel safe, please help me. You can stop the negative anxious thoughts. Now, but I also want to give you exercise for actually thinking clearly and changing anxious negative thoughts into more positive ones, right? So first of all, think about the second order consequences of your choices. Now, this doesn't have to just only be about anxiety. This can be literally everything in life. Whenever you make a decision, ask yourself, what are the second order consequences, right? So watching TV right now might feel good, but what's, what the fuck is going on with my hair? I just went on a walk and it was raining, so my hair is a bit fucked. <laughs> so whenever you're making a decision like watching TV, think about the second order consequences. You might have a bit of pleasure right now in the moment, but if you continue to do this over and over again, you will maybe become more anxious because you're not moving your body, right? The inflammation in your body is increasing. Maybe you also have a couple of snacks while watching TV, which is bad food and again, increasing your inflammation and all making your anxiety worse and screwing up your hormones. And you're not working on yourself, you're not getting sunlight, you're not meditating, right? If you say yes to one thing, you say automatically no to another thing. And also when you when you go to like social events or when you're anxious about like a social a social setting or going to school, or going to work, or going to like a family event or to a restaurant or just going outside in general, or whatever situation really, right? Like a job promotion, exam. Just think about what happens if I fail, what happens after that? Right? Because when you're anxious you have a perceived problem. It's not a real problem, right? So the distinction between fear and anxiety has to be made very clear. So give me, let me give you an example. Imagine you're in a forest and you're hunting with your tribe together. You're like three, four guys and you want to hunt on this deer. But then you, like all of a sudden you hear a bear approaching you and the bear's right in front of you. That's when you feel fear. 
right? So the amygdala inside of your brain is sending out cortisol and adrenaline, right? The stress hormones are getting uh, rushed into your bloodstream and the blood gets shot into your muscles and you become ready to fight, to run away, right? Flee or to freeze, right? So you can fight the lion, you do nothing or you run away. That is fear. When you have the, when you have the problem, the threat right now in front of you in the present moment. Now, anxiety is just the perceived threat. So anxiety is when you think about what if a bear is approaching me? What if, what if, what if? But the bear is not actually there. So you're inside of the forest and you're like speaking about, um, speaking to your tribe brothers about what if there's a bear around the corner and then everyone starts to get anxious. That is anxiety. And the same thing happens in your body. But the problem is not real. It's in the future. It's a perceived problem. It's, a, it's not real. The bear is not close to you. It, there maybe is even that if there maybe is no bear at all close to you, but you think it, and that is anxiety. And when the bear is present in the present moment, right in front of you, that is fear. But the response, right, is the same. So you can literally just, when you have a stressful event, just put it, like think about what happens if I do fail. What happens if this bad experience that I'm anxious about actually starts to happen? So if you think about what if there's a bear and then the bear is actually in front of you, what can you do about it? Right? You can prepare yourself. You can bring a sword with you. You can bring a shield with you. You can uh, go on a hunt with 20 people instead of five. Or whatever. Or you can prepare yourself to run away and buy like very fast shoes or something like that. Like That's not a real example. <laughs> like you probably didn't have nice running shoes a thousand years ago, but you get my point. Or you can maybe wear like some... Um, clothes that will make you invisible in the forest, like a green camouflage vest or something like that. So you basically think about, okay, what if this bad event actually happens? How can I prepare myself? How can I be ready to act? How can I be ready to solve this problem immediately? And that will make you less anxious because you know that the worst case scenario is not that bad if you prepare yourself. Now this brings me on to the second and the third step. Imagine the worst case scenario. Yesterday evening, I was stressing out about, my, out about my finances and my driver's license, right? So I currently have, I'm doing my driver's license and I have to pay like 3,000 K, right? 3,000 euros. And I was stressing out about it. I know I have the money, but I was still stressing out about it. I was like, no, but I, I don't want to pay it. And what if I fail and I have to pay more than 3K and I have to do the test again and pay another 500. And then I was lying awake at night, just thinking for like 30 minutes until I started to realize that the worst case scenario is not terrible at all. The worst case scenario is I fail the test, I lose a bit of money, and that's it. I still have money left over, I'm still here in this room, I still have all of my equipment, I'm still working on my business and with my clients, I have new money coming in, my girlfriend is still there, I am still there, I got everything that I need, my family can support me, there's literally nothing to worry about if the bad scenario does happen. It's just imagine a journal about the worst case scenario, and then you will realize that it's not that bad. It's not that bad, it's just your mind playing tricks with you. Your mind, your anxious mind is lying to you. Now, the last thing that I do to reduce my anxiety is just like a method that I came up with, with <laughs> that I came up with by journaling like every single day for multiple years and struggling with anxiety for eight years of my life. So I just ask myself, why am I anxious? Why am I anxious? Why are you anxious? Just write it down. Why are you anxious? Now, if you don't know the answer, it doesn't matter. Just write down what you think is making you anxious and brainstorm solutions. So why am I anxious? Well, it could be because of the driver's license test and because I'm losing money. And, you know, I feel like a, I feel like I'm losing a bit of security and money and I don't like that. And then you simply ask yourself, why? You just ask yourself, why? And then it's like, okay, because I want to feel secure and I have the same self image of someone that has a lot of money saved up and is dealing good with money and doesn't let you lose money. Okay, why? Yeah, because my family used to uh, have this like belief and now I adopted this belief. Okay, why? Well, because they always said this one thing, like money doesn't grow in trees. Okay, what is the easiest and most actionable answer? Once you found like the core of why you're anxious, what is the easiest answer that you can find? Right, you bra then you brainstorm the answers. You maybe find like five different answers. Okay, I could make more money. I could change my belief. I could stop worrying and ignore it. I could distract myself. What is the easiest and most actionable answer? And also the most beneficial, right? So distracting yourself might be easy, but it's not beneficial. So you want to find the easy, actionable and profitable, not profitable, but realistic and good answer that will benefit you in the future. So not avoiding the situation, not ignoring it, 
not avoiding it, whatever. Action the steps that you can take right away that will benefit you. And I was like, okay, yeah, I could just, I could change my belief. I can stop worrying about money and make more money. All right, so if you're stressing about the, about the finances, you can do this, but you can do this with any other situation, like a social situation. Why are you scared of getting rejected? Like, why do you think you're anxious? Well, I'm scared of getting rejected. Why? Because I have the self-image of someone who is confident and proud. Why? Because I'm deeply insecure and I try to overplay it. And, you know, like I try to build muscle to live up to other people's expectations. Okay, why? Because when I was seven years old, I got made fun of in a social setting by my friends. And now I feel lonely and like I'm not worthy of love. Okay, why? And then you dive deeper and deeper and deeper. Now, what are the action steps? What are the things that you could do today to solve this problem? Well, you could, again, you could change your belief. You could change your self-image through visualization. You could improve yourself. You could let go of it and just try to not be a perfectionist or try to not intimidate other people or uh, be a people pleaser. Okay, and then the last step of this framework is that you simply act. You simply do. You just operate. And if you're still like worried about what might happen, what if, what if, what if, write it down. I will do this because I found out that this is a real root cause and I solved this by insert an action. And then you just look at it. You just look at it. Okay, I am socially anxious because of this and this and this and this. What can I do about it? You write it down and you do it. If you don't want to do it because you're uncertain, just <laughs> read it again. The evidence is literally on your piece of paper. And now with these are four journaling methods that I found super helpful and I hope you find some kind of um, value inside of them. Right? Like you can also experiment and try a different technique and you know like journaling is about expressing yourself and about what finding out what works for you. I'm simply sharing what worked for me because I know the pain that you are going through because I'm feeling this way since eight years and I kind of managed to deal with my anxiety quite good and reduce it to a very significant amount that I am living the life that I want to live. I'm in, of, in control of my thoughts and emotions most of the time. If you want to reduce your generalized anxiety disorder in just 30 days without spending eight years of figuring out what works and what doesn't, you can click on the first link in the description to book a free call with me. We will hop on a call. We will see if you're the right fit for my coaching program. And if you are, I hope to see you inside. And if not, continue to enjoy my free content. Thanks for watching and please take action.